The following are the continued questions from the Bhavan Journal, answered by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on June 29, 1976, at the New Brindavan Farm Community. We must inquire about the absolute truth. And the next verse it is explained. Madanti tattattva vidas tattam jadriyanam. Tattattva. Tattva means truth. The truth is explained by the tattva bit, one who knows the truth. How? Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Sagdati. He is explained as Brahma, as Paramatma, and as Bhagavan. This is Vedanta Sutra. Now one should learn what is Bhagavan, what is Brahma, what is Paramatma. In this way one should make advancement of his uh, spiritual consciousness. That is the purpose of Vedanta Sutra. May I ask another question, Srila Prabhupada? Mm. Well, the Vedantis, they have come uh, from the uh, uh, impersonal explanation of Shankara Chant, Sharira Bhatsa. Uh, but uh, they simply give stress on the Sharira Bhatsa, but there are other Bhatsa. Bhatsa means commentary. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural commentary by the author himself. Besides that, there are Vedanta Bhaskans written by the Ramanu Charja, Madhya Charja, Vishnu Shami, uh, and all the Vaishnava Charjas. Unfortunately, they do not care to read all these Vedanta Bhaskans. They simply take Sarira Bhaskans and become impersonalists and call themselves as Vedanta. What is the reason for that? The reason means people do not know. They cheat. Suppose I present something, uh, uh, misconception, and if there are others also who can speak something on this. There are two lawyers, one speaking one point of law, another lawyer is speaking. So if you take one side only, then I will understand. Hmm. So they are simply reading this Sharira uh, Bhastra. They are not reading other Bhastra, which is natural. And they are cheating people. Why there are two lawyers? Huh? Two opposite parties, there are two lawyers. One lawyer says this uh, law is like this. And the other party says, no, it is this. Uh, and the judge is there. He will take what is the real meaning. But this interpretation is required when things are not clear. Now the Vedanta Sutta says, Janmadasya Jatha. The absolute truth is that from whom everything uh, comes in, emanates. Now here in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that Aham Sarvasa Prabhava. Matta Sarvam Prabhattati, clearly, that I am the origin of everything and everything comes from me, so I don't you take it. Why simply you remain theoretically understood that the absolute truth is that from which everything emanates. But when the absolute truth comes before you and says that I am the origin of everything, everything comes from me. Why don't you ac accept Krishna as absolute truth? Why do you take the so-called impersonalist view only, that God has no form? Here is God speaking, person. Why don't you take it? So if you want to be cheated, then who can stop it? Yet Krishna says, Sarvasya Chang Ridhishan Nivishya, I love this one. Sarvasya Chang Ridhishan Nivishya, Matta Smriti Jnana Mapu Hanancha. 
Here it is clearly said, Vedanta Krit. Read the purport. Translation, I am seated in everyone's head and from me comes remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas am I to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. So they do not go to the compiler of Vedanta, they go to a rascal. How they will understand Vedanta? Suppose, I have written this book. If you cannot understand something, mm. if you come directly to me, that is real. Why do you go to a rascal who has nothing to do with this book? If some rascal claims that I am Vedanti, so your discussion should be, why shall I not go to the real compiler of Vedanta? Why shall I go to a rascal? So that means they are rascals, they are being cheated. Let them take to Bhagavad Gita, let them take to Sumadhu Hanavatam, they will understand Vedanta. They are real Vedanta. But they, these rascals, they are avoiding Bhagavad Gita and avoiding uh, Sumadhu Hanavatam and claiming them for that Vedanta. So if you go to a cheater, you will cheat him. That is your business. The, the Supreme Lord is situated as Paramatma in everyone's heart, and it is from Him that all activities are initiated. The living entity forgets everything of his past life, but he has to work according to the direction of the Supreme Lord, who is witness to all his work. Therefore he begins his work according to his past deeds. Required knowledge is supplied to him, and remembrance is given to him, and he forgets also about his past life. Thus the Lord is not only all-pervading, he is also localized in every individual heart. He awards a different fruitive results. He is not only worshipable as the impersonal Brahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the localized Paramatma, but as the form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. The Vedas give the right direction to the people so that they can properly mold their lives and come back to Godhead, back to home. The Vedas offer knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and Krishna in his incarnation as Vyasadeva is a compiler of the Vedanta Sutra. The commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva in the Srimad Bhagavatam gives the real understanding of the Vedanta Sutra. The Supreme Lord is so full that for the deliverance of the conditioned soul, he is the supplier and the digester of foodstuff the witness of his activity, the giver of knowledge in the form of Vedas, and as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, the teacher of the Bhagavad Gita. He is worshipable by the conditioned soul. Thus God is all good, God is all merciful. Ananta pravishta shashta jnanam The living entity forgets as soon as he quits his present body, but he begins his work again initiated by the Supreme Lord. Although he forgets, the Lord gives him the intelligence to renew his work where he ended his last life. So not only does a living entity enjoy or suffer in this world according to the dictation from the Supreme Lord situated locally in the heart, but he receives the opportunity to understand Vedas from him. If one is serious to understand the Vedic knowledge, then Krishna gives the required intelligence. Why does he present the Vedic knowledge for understanding? Because a living entity individually needs to understand Krishna. Vedic literature confirms this. Yo so in all Vedic literature, beginning from the four Vedas, Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads and Puranas, the glories of the Supreme Lord are celebrated. By, perform by performing Vedic rituals, discussing the Vedic philosophy, and worshipping the Lord in devotional service, he is attained. Therefore, the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Krishna. The Vedas give us direction to understand, to understand Krishna and the process of understanding. The ultimate goal is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vedanta Sutra confirms this in the following words, Tattu Saman Vyayat, Tattu Saman Vyayat, 
One can attain perfection by understanding Vedic literature, and one can understand his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by performing the different processes. Thus one can approach him, and at the end, attain the Supreme Goal, who is no other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In this verse, however, the purpose of the Vedas, the understanding of the Vedas, and the goal of the Vedas are clearly defined. I'm a companion. So why one should go to learn Vedanta from others? How does bhakti tie into the uh, Vedantic, uh, the uh, conclusion of Vedantic knowledge or wisdom? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, he says here that uh, bhakti is the most suitable and easiest path for God realization. Mm. This is proclaimed. Mm. Uh, but uh, the Vedantic teachings, uh, he says the in the Vedantic teaching, the stress is on jnana. Is that a fact? Gyan, what is gyan? Gyan means that is his strength in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhavanam Janvanam Ante Gyanavan Mahana Prabhadvate So unless one surrenders to Krishna, there is no Gyan. It is all nonsense. And they are passing as Gyan. There is no knowledge at all. Vedanta means the ultimate knowledge. The ultimate knowledge, the subject matter of ultimate knowledge is Krishna, God. See, if one does not know who is God, who is Krishna, then where is knowledge? This is fact, is knowledge. But he, if a rascal claims that I am man of knowledge, then what can be done? Hmm. Knowledge is explained that uh, uh, when one uh, understands that Krishna is having Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Samahatma Sudhudya. When one understands that Vasudeva Krishna is everything, then that is knowledge. Before that there is no knowledge. It is simply misunderstanding. Brahmati Paramatmati Bhagavani Tisabdhate. One may begin with impersonal Brahma uh, by the speculative uh, method, or one can uh, realize the, uh, uh, what is called, Paramatma, uh, localized aspect. But that is uh, the secondary stage. The final stage is uh, understand the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna. Veda is just by a homey of wisdom. That is the final knowledge. But if you do not understand Krishna, then where is your knowledge? Knowledge, halfway knowledge is not knowledge, complete knowledge. That complete knowledge is possible, as it is said in the Bhagavad-gītā, bhavnāṁ janvanāṁ. Those who are uh, striving to acquire knowledge, such persons, after many, many births, uh, when actually by the grace of God and by the grace of his devotee he comes to the knowledge, then he agrees, oh, Vāsudeva Sarvani, everything is Krishna. Some Atma, that Mahatma, great soul, is very rare to be found. Sudurlava. Durlava means very rare to be seen, uh, but the word is used, Sudurlava, very, very rare. So you, so you, you cannot find such uh, Mahatma who understands clearly uh, Krishna. Manushyanam sāvase su kaschit jatu fi siddhaya jatu dāma vi siddhyāna kaschit. Siddha means liberated. So one may become liberated in that, uh, but from that liberated position again it falls down, unless he understands the Supreme Person. Āruca kritsena param patam tata patanti adha Unless he comes to the uh, final 
uh, understanding of the absolute soul, Krishna, is for them. There were so many Vedantis, they first of all, they give up this word. Brahma Sattva Jagan Mitha, this word is false. But again, and they come down and become busy in doing some philanthropy work, opening hospitals, middle and wife. If the world is false, why you are coming down again on this platform? That means they could not get any substance by, uh, by the so-called announcement of this world. Karuchakrachena, or uh, going to that platform of Siddhi, liberation, they had to undergo so much difficulties and austerities, but still, even going there, uh, just like these people are going to the moon planet. And actually whether they have gone or not, and that is a doubtful thing. But the thing is, why they are coming down again? That is our challenge. If you have gone to the moon planet, then colonize there. But why you have come down again and do not talk anything about? What do you think? I really couldn't say. I've, they've been there, they say. They say, they and we go believe, there, they but bring back we are rocks. common man, layman. We say that if you have gone there, why do you not leave there? Yes. They just bring back rocks to show us we have rocks If here. there is rock, if there is sand, then why don't you colonize them? If they have gone there, there is land. If you cry in the sky, and if you get a land, then you can stay there. And because you cannot stay there, you come back again. So there, the Mahamadhi is positioned there. Arudya Krishna Param. They merge into the impersonal Brahma, but there is no place to stay. They come down again to this material world. You may go many thousands and millions of miles in the sky, but you want to stay somewhere. But if you cannot get any place to stay, then again come to this. Uh, Moscow and, and uh, in New York. But our inquiry uh, is that if you have gone there, uh, then why don't you stay there? What is the answer? Hmm? They say the atmosphere is not suitable. Then why ask can you go there? <laughs> 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 and spend so much money that's well. He could not understand that the atmosphere is not good for us to go there and spend so much money. They impress the people. That means they are bluffer and the bluffing is all fools and things, that's all. He could not understand before going there, before spending so much money, the atmosphere is not good. But without personal direct experience, they can. It's, uh, for your direct claims, you have to spend so much money. The people are so poor, they do not challenge it. Everyone knows, suppose the one is coming to the Western country, uh, Europe and America, we knew it. Today it is cold country, we must take proper dress, and we have come, and we are staying. <coughs> so this is knowledge. So if you do not, do not know what is the atmosphere you are there, why do you spend so much money? And again you are going to the mass. Are you very uh, uh, fixed up what is the position there? Then you will again bring something, <laughs> some dust and rock. <laughs> And this business will go on at the expense of it. You can do, you have got money, you can do that. But uh, we are Indians, we are coming from poor country. Uh, you spend so much money for nothing, uh, that is very, not very palatable for us. We one tenth of the expenditure you are giving to us for spreading this Krishna consciousness, not a single pie you will give. 
and they will spoil money for going to the moon planet and bring some dust. Kripananda Maharaj is struggling to construct a small uh, residential quarter here, and he has to beg, he has to collect, he has rent. Why the government does not pay? There are so many people and living, let them be comfortable. They will spend this money, millions of dollars, and to build some dust. Is that very same government? And people are so fooled that they do not challenge the government. Why you are spending for nothing? They can do that. They brought back Nixon. Why not stop this and they said expenditure? Next public sense program. Yes. For nothing, and it is your side and you can leave, let down. There are marks going on to you, we pay you. Let it, you take it right. I may die, I'm old man. Take it down. It will be pay you. I told ten years before that this is childish. One page reporter inquiring Sankar. What is it? Now this is childish, wasting money. The reporter came to see me in Los Angeles. Mm. He remembered that. So if you want to spend for nothing like that, you can do that. You have got money. If you say to a politician, give Sri Prabhupada money, like I said to one man running for governor of this state, I said, why can't you help the community in New Vrindavan? Oh, you said? He cited to me, he cited to me so many rules and regulations. They're not interested. They're interested in pleasing themselves. Yeah. Man yeah. runs for government. His whole position to run for governor is to please himself so that yes, he can become rich. Yeah, yeah, right. Sense getting is nobody wants to do anything. They think Nixon captured the presidential post for his own satisfaction. And when the people uh, found that he had a tree, they agitated and got him down. So this is the difficulty that. We are blind and we are being guided by blind men. So the result is catastrophic. Ask another question, Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Question number nine. Is a guru essential to one to enter the spiritual path and attain the goal? And how does one recognize one's guru? Yeah, that is explained. That guru is necessary in the Bhagavad Gita when uh, Krishna and Arjuna were talking as friends. The, there was no conclusion. The talking was going on, but no conclusion was made. Therefore, uh, Arjun decided to accept Krishna as his guru. Find out this was Karpanna Dosa Abhanta Sahara. Karpanya Dosa Pahata Svabhava. Pichami Twam Dama Samuda Cheta Yastreya Shan Nishitam Bruitan Me Sishyasteham Sari Mam Twam Prapanam. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all compo composure because of weakness. In this condition I am asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Uh, the Guru is necessary. Every one is perplexed. Nobody can decide himself. Uh, even a, a physician, a medical man, when he is um, sick, he does not um, make his own treatment. 
he calls for another physician because he is sick, his brain is not in order. How he can prescribe the real medicine for himself? That is natural. So, similarly, when we are perplexed, bewildered, and cannot make any solution, at that time the right person, guru, is required. That is essential. You cannot avoid it. So, in our present existence, we are all perplexed. Uh, Arjuna is representing uh, the perplexed position of the materialistic person. And we are actually all perplexed. So under the circumstances, uh, to give us a real direction, a guru is required. Now, here is the example that Arjuna decided Krishna as Guru. He did not go to anyone else to accept as Guru. Uh, the explanation is there. Uh, I know. Yeah. Without you, I don't find anyone. Yes, Chokamuts Chosinam Indrianam, Avapya Bhumo Asapatna Ridam, Rajam Saranam Apichadipatyam. I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to destroy it even if I win an unrivaled kingdom on the earth. That without you, I do not find anyone else who can give me the real. No. The doubt when uh, the fallen yogi, who else can? Mm -hmm. I think so. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the, I'll look it up in the. Yeah. What do you find? I'll look it up in the Sanskrit index. What uh, was what that? is the slow? The slow I do not remember exactly, but oh. there is continuation. He will be all chain. Seeing Arjuna full of compassion and very sorrowful, his eyes brimming with tears, Madhusa Dam Krishna spoke the following words. One, that's the of every part one. The Supreme Person Bhagavan said, My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the progressive values of life. They do not lead to higher planets, but to infamy. O son of Prita, do not yield to this degrading impotence. It does not become you. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Arjuna said, O killer of Madhu, Krishna, how can I counteract his arrows in battle, men like Bhisma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? It is better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of lives of great souls who are my teachers. Even though they are avaricious, they are nonetheless superiors. If they are killed, their spoils will be tainted with blood. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. The sons of Dhritarashtra, whom if we killed we should not care to live, are now stand, standing before us on this battlefield. Now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of weakness. In this condition I am asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to destroy it even if I win an unrivaled kingdom on the earth with sovereignty like the dev demigods in heaven. Sanjaya said, having thus spoken, Arjuna, chastiser of the enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. O oh, descendant of Bharat, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjuna. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, he has said already that, that I do not find uh, <coughs> any other name to by me, and you are the only, the part is that uh, in Ojjon is accepting Krishna as Guru to instruct him how to get relief from the perplexed position. So, the, the, in, in this sense, the real Guru is Krishna. Krishna is Guru, not only for Ojjon, for everyone. So if we get instruction from Krishna and um, abide by that order, instruction, then our life is successful. Uh, that is, uh, our mission, Krishna consciousness movement means accept 
Krishna as Guru. We don't say, uh, don't divert your attention. Uh, we don't say that I am Krishna. We never say that. We simply uh, ask people that you abide by the order of Krishna. Uh, Krishna says, Sarvadharman Paritajya Mahame Kangu Saranangvaja. And we say that you surrender to Krishna. Uh, give up all other ideas of so called dharma or religiosity. The same thing. <coughs> but we don't say that you hear me, I uh, am the authority. No, we don't say that. We say Krishna is the authority and you try to understand Krishna. This is Krishna consciousness moment. Therefore the question is Guru, so here from the behavior of Arjun, we see that Guru is necessary. Uh, Arjun was talking with Krishna as friend, but uh, Arjun saw that this is, uh, there is no good talking like that. We can continue talking because we are equal status. Krishna is my friend. I am also his friend. So he is answering. I am giving something. If this talking will go, there will be no fruit. Therefore he said, now Krishna, I am becoming your disciple. Uh, disciple means there is no argument. Whatever the Guru will say, you have to accept. That is disciple. That is final. Uh, there is no argument. So you put him into that position that I, I, I cease to talk with you on equal level of friends. Now I accept you as Guru. Therefore, the Guru is necessary Undoubtedly, because every one of us in perplexed position, but who is Guru? Guru means Krishna. All Krishna's repentance, as all others are bogus. If one does not say on the standard of Krishna, then he is not Guru. He is a bogus. In that way everyone can become Guru. I have got some opinion, I can say. But unless, just like a, a lawyer is he who follows the standard law. If a lawyer says that I am manufacturer of my laws, so who will hear it? And what will the use of becoming lawyer? No. You have to follow the standard law. Then you are a lawyer. And a big lawyer means who knows the standard law very well. So similarly, Guru is Krishna and Guru is necessary, but one must uh, surrender to Krishna uh, or Krishna's representative, uh, then um, he will be successful. So, so far, <coughs> now one can say that Krishna is not present, but Krishna is not present. How you can say Krishna's instruction is there? Bhagavad Gita. How you can say that Krishna absolute means the Supreme Lord is not different from His uh, words of The words of Krishna and the Krishna, they are the same. Uh, that is the absolute truth. In the relative world, the words water and the substance water are different. If I am thirsty, if I simply uh, chant water, 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 my thirst will not be satisfied. I require the real water. And that is relative world. Uh, but in the spiritual world, that's why we are chanting Krishna, Hare Krishna. If Krishna is different from uh, Hare Krishna, then how we are satisfied chanting whole day and night? This is proof. The ordinary thing, if you chant Mr. John, Mr. John, after chanting three times you will cease. But this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, if you go on chanting twenty-four hours, you'll never be tired. This is the spiritual absolute truth. That is practical, any of them perceive. So <coughs> Krishna is present by his words, by his presentative. Why don't you take? You have to take Guru. Why do go to the pseudo-guru who will mislead you? Why don't you take to the real guru? That is your mistake. Therefore you are now disappointed, now you are in doubt whether Guru is needed. Yes, Guru is needed. But you go to the real Guru. 
That is instructed in the Bhagavad Gita. That's a kind of this verse. Tadmiddhi paripatena paripatsnena sevaya upalakshanti tadgyana ungyanina tadpadakshanti. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. So this is Guru. Uh, and then one who has seen the truth. Yes. Jnani uh, nastat uh, So one, one who has seen, Radha Arjuna has seen Krishna. That's a fact. You are talking. Uh, now that if you take an instruction of Arjuna, then you understand the what is the instruction of Arjuna. Find out in the tenth chapter. Arjuna Vacha. Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavam Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Ari Deva Majam Vibhum Bhutvam Vishak Sarve Devashir Naradastata Asito Devlo Vyasa Sayam Chaiva Pradeshi Me Arjuna said, You are the Supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the supreme abode and purifier. And then Vedanta Sutra says, Athata Brahma Jigyasa. Now here Arjuna is experienced, you are the Supreme Brahma. So he has seen the Supreme Brahma. You met Arjuna Guru, Krishna Guru, Arjuna is the Trinity of Krishna, friend of Krishna. So why do you go to a bogus guru? He must be cheated. Guru is essential, it is necessary. But take the real guru. But if you go to the bogus guru, you must, you must be disappointed. For your treatment, he, you need to go to a physician. That's it. When you are diseased, you cannot say, no, no, I don't trust you. No, it is necessary. Uh, but go to the real physician. Don't go to a cheater. He has no knowledge in the medical science and he places into that I am physician, MD. Then he will be cheated. The guru is necessary. That's a fact. But go to the real guru. Who is real guru? Real guru is Krishna. Or one who has seen Krishna, Arjuna, take them. Then you will verify that. Uh, if you uh, go to a bogus man who does not know Krishna, who does not know his Krishna is instruction, then you must teach it. <coughs> so the answer is, Guru is absolutely necessary. Tadvigyanatham sa guru meva avigatshi, this is Vedic injunction. And one must go, but he must go to the real Guru. And who is real Guru? Who knows Krishna? Take, for example, the Ojjan, for how he studied Krishna, and he says, Param Brahma Param Dhava. Read the translation. Arjuna said, You are the Supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the supreme abode and purifier, the absolute truth, and the eternal divine person. You are the primal God, transcendental and original, and you are the unborn and all-pervading beauty. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala and Vyas proclaim this of you, and now you yourself are declaring it to me. Arjuna is rectifying this, because people may say Arjuna was Krishna's friend. He is accepting his guru. No, Arjuna says not only I, but other authorities, they also accept. So it is, everything is clear that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and He should be accepted as Guru. All His representatives should be accepted as Guru. Then it will be. So our this Krishna Consciousness moment is that we are uh, presenting Krishna as the Supreme Guru. We take instruction from him and be benefited. But one who is carrying this message, he is also authorized. 
that's why uh, one money order, say it is coming through the post office, but an ordinary peon is handing over the money order, but he is the prince of your post office. Actually, the money order is being delivered by the post office, general post office, but it is coming through an ordinary peon. But because he is authorized to deliver you, he is also good. He is as good as the post office. Uh, that you have got a letter box, a small box, but if you put your letter there, your letter will surely go 10,000 miles. Therefore, although it is a small box, you don't think it is a small box, it is a whole post office. Similarly, anyone who is carrying the message of Krishna, don't think that he is ordinary man. If you meet it, one box like that, post box, and put your letter, and for thousand years it will lie down. Because it is not authorized. So if somebody says this small box, red box, is as good as the post office, one will say, this is a small box, how can be as good as the post office? But you see, you post your letter, it will go. Therefore, saksādhari-tena samatya-sāstri yukta-stakhā-vābhata-yabhata-devi Guru is directly the Supreme Personality of God. Why? Because He is presenting the words of Supreme Personality of God without any deterioration. Therefore He is so honored. So therefore the conclusion is Guru is and necessary, and Guru is He who is the presentative of Krishna. Otherwise, it is both. What about the so called Gurus that take a little bit here? So called Gurus, yeah. they are so called Gurus, they are not Gurus. That is already explained. If one does not speak what Krishna speaks, he is not Guru. If you accept so-called guru, that is your misfortune. What can you do? Some of them will say some things that Krishna says, but they'll take from other places also. What is the position of such persons? Well, he is most dangerous. Hmm. He is most dangerous. He is opportunist. Hmm. He is finding out customer, something here, uh, according to the customer he is giving something. Hmm. As the customer to the priest. So he is not guru, he is a servant. <coughs> he wants to serve the so-called disciple so that he may be satisfied and pay him something. Mm. He is servant, he is not guru. Guru is the master. He cannot disobey guru. But if you give a servant, you want to please the disciple by flattering him to get his money, then you are not guru, you are servant. Just like a sad man pleases the master. He is not the guru, he is servant. <coughs> so our position should be servant, yes, yeah, a servant of the Supreme. So a guru means heavy. You cannot utilize him for satisfying your means. That is not good. So we're continuing with this uh, questionnaire from Bhavan's journal in Bombay. Uh, this is question number 10. Question number 10, Srila Prabhupada is, Will mantras lose their sanctity if they are not in Sanskrit? Will mantras lose their sanctity or holiness if they are not in the Sanskrit language? Mantra 
the Sanskrit language. It may the letters may be different, but it is a transcendental sound. The sound must be vibrated. You cannot translate it. The sound as it is, just like Hare Krishna, Mahamantra, the sound must be produced. You cannot translate. Then it will be Athava, that is prohibited. You cannot interpret or do other way, the sound vibration uh, must be there. Then it will continue the sense. Is that to say that the uh, the mantras can be written in uh, Devanagari script or in Roman letters? It doesn't matter. But the sound must be the same. In there. Hmm. The sound is important. So the sanctity is in the sound vibration. And not in, not so much it, that it's in the uh, the uh, Sanskrit letters itself. Yeah. May I ask another question, Sri Prabhupada? Mm-hmm. Are fasting and other dietary regulations necessary for leading a spiritual life? Exactly. Tamasa Brahmacharya Samena Damena Tagena Satta Sauja Bhyam Jamena Niyamena Va. So, advanced in spiritual life, these things are essential. Tapasya. Tapasya means uh, voluntarily accepting something which may be painful. Just like we are recommending no illicit sex, no gambling, no meat eating. But those who are accustomed to these bad habits, or them in the beginning, it may be a little difficult. So in spite of becoming difficult, one has to do it. That is called tapasya. To rise early in the morning, those who are not practiced, it is a little painful, but one has to do it. So this is called tapasya. So according to the basic injunction, there are some tapasya that must be done. It is not, I may do it or not do it, must be done. It's like uh, in the Mundok Panishad, it is ordered that one must go to the spiritual mark. So Vigyana Thamsa Guru Meva Abhyachet. So there is no question of voluntarily, but it must be. And one must carry out by the order of a spiritual master and the order of the Shastra. That is called tapasya. The in all line, ekadasi, is compulsory. Uh, one may feel some inconvenience, fasting, or simply eating food. No, it must be done. Huh? There are so many rules and regulations uh, which is essential. It must be done. That is called tapasya. Without consideration, whether it is convenient or inconvenient for you, which is must be done, that is called tapasya. Tapa, the bangri, that's right. You have that order. So this human life is meant for tapasya. Therefore, in our basic civilization we find so many rules and regulations. This is tapasya. 
So from the very beginning of life, Brahmacharya, to go to the spiritual master of prayer and act like menial servant, each of us, so they said, if the spiritual master says that you go and pick up some food from the forest, and one may be a king's son, but he cannot deny it. The spiritual master's order, you must go. That's Krishna. Uh, he was ordered to go and pick up some dry wood from the forest. So he had to go, although he had his father as Nanda Maharaj, and we village, Vaishya king, and Krishna was personality of Godhead, but he could not deny. He had to go. Reach over. He has prime minion servant. Hadaritana Brahmachari. This is Kabhasa. So Kabhasa is so essential that one has to be. Uh, there is no question of alternative. Then Brahmachari, then if he marries, then Girastha, that is also Kamasa. He cannot have sex life as whatever he likes. No. The Rasa said, you must have sex life like this, once in a month, and only for the getting children. So that is also Kamasa. They do not follow, people do not follow any Kamsa and the government. But human life is meant for Kamsa, regular people. Uh, even in ordinary life, this like you are driving a car, uh, you are going to the urgent business, and you saw on the red light. You have to stop. Uh, you cannot say, oh, I have to leave by this time. You must go. No, you must. That is tabasa. The tabasa means to follow the regulative principles strictly by the higher order, and that is human life. And animal life means you can do whatever you like. Either keep to the right, keep to the left, it doesn't matter. But there, offense is not taken because they are animals. But a human being, if he does not follow the regulatory principles, it is sinful. He will be punished. The same principle, just like when there is dead light, if you do not stop, he will be punished. But a cat and dog, if he turns their face, no mind red light, he will go. He is not The couple says that for the human being, he must do it. If he wants at all, progress of life. That is essential. In terms of uh, diet, dietary regulations, eating... That is also tapasya. That is also tapasya. Just like we are privating meat eating. So in your country, uh, there is little trouble. From the very beginning of his life, he is, um, I would say, habituated to eat meat. The mother purchases powder and meat and mixes eggs in it and by force. So he has been uh, trained up eating meat and I said, don't eat meat. So then we had some fun. And if he's serious, he must have accepted the order. That is all. Kamasa mm-hmm. means in diet, in practice, in behavior, in dealing and so on and so on, everything that is kamasa. That is all described. Mental kamasa, bodily kamasa, and um, what is called? Abhod. This is Bhatu Vigam, this is Kamasa. You cannot cut nonsense. Uh, 
you have to talk something nonsense matter according to don't talk nonsense so we you want to listen to that when my chance be good to the land what if you talk you might talk about this law let it go after has ordered me not to talk usually anything only talk of this law so if he does that then he comes Tamasa in the matter of words. Tamasa in connection with body. Tamasa in connection with mind. Bhāca vegaṁ, kroda vegaṁ. One has become angry. And if you want to express it by meeting or something, by Tamasa is a stick. No, no. I want to kill you. ंग That is controversial. And that is human. Suppose if you want to make progress in spiritual life, and you are human life, human being, you must act uh, according to the Shastri. That is controversial. Brahma, before creation, he had to undergo tapasya. Is it not stated? Yes. Yeah. So tapasya is the essence here. You cannot have one here. This is listing in the three capacities in the Gita. Yeah, read it. Devadvija Guru Pragya Pujanam Sotam Ajiva Brahmacharyam Ahimsacha Sariram Tapahuchate The austerity of the body consists in this, worship of the Supreme Lord, the Brahmanas, the spiritual master, and superiors like the father and mother. Cleanliness, simplicity, celibacy, and non-violence are also austerities of the body. Hmm. Shall I do the third point? Oh, why do you want to? Third point? No. That was how white man there. Oh. Uh, Anudvega karam vakya satcham priya hitam chaya swadhyaya vyasanam chayva Vanmayam tapauchate. Mm-hmm. Austerity of speech consists in speaking truthfully and beneficially, and in avoiding speech that offends. One should also recite the Vedas regularly. Mm-hmm. Mana prasada sam samyatvam mona matma vinigraha bhava sam sudhiriti itat tapo mana sam uchate. And serenity, simplicity, gravity, self-control, and purity of thought. are the austerities of the mind. Sadaya paraya taptam tapas tat tri vidam narai apala kank shibir yuktai sat vikam parichak shate This threefold austerity practiced by men whose aim is not to benefit themselves materially but to please the Supreme is of the nature of goodness. Yes. The aim is to please the Supreme. Through this person, this sub-prasala, Bhagavad-prasala, this is God. Mm. Now we are teaching this sub-prasala.